Hi, I'm Megan Walker and thanks for checking out this video. If it's your first time looking at any of my content, thank you for being here. And if you like this, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And if you've seen any of my videos before, thanks for coming back, really appreciate it. So in this one, what we're going to look at is how you can get an email notification sent out to somebody internal within your marketing team or to, I guess you could send it out to the owner of a new lead that gets created or any kind of thing like that. But when a form has been submitted on your website. So this is basically using a Dynamics 365 marketing form. Someone fills it out, hit submit, and then what can we do to actually send out an email notification to somebody? So let's go ahead and have a look first of all and see what we're talking about in terms of a marketing form. So if we look here, we've got a main contact form, we've got some fields on here, that's fine. Um, and then this is where you are making that form live um, and either you are hosting on a portal or in this instance I'm generating the, um, the script. So I basically am taking whatever is provided here and then I'm going and putting it in my website. So I have a contact us form that is on my site. When someone fills that out, I want that to send an email to somebody. So we are going to use Trusty Power Automate. So to do this, we're going to walk through and I'm going to talk um, about each of the steps. Now, I always rename my steps and this is for me is good practice um, so that anyone else that's coming and looking at it can see what um, it have a bit more explanation, I guess, in terms of what it's actually doing. Um, you can always click on the question mark and it will tell you what the actual name of that step is. So our first trigger is when a row is added, modified or deleted and the change type in this instance is added. And the table name is marketing form submission. So when anyone ever submits a form, that's what it creates in Dynamics. Now, what you can do is if you wanted to run this just for a specific form, um, you could actually put in uh, something to filter and you could do something like this. Filter rows where the marketing form ID equals and whatever that ID is, is basically from the top of uh, when you're looking at your marketing form and dynamics, whatever that ID is at the end, that's what you would put here in your code so that you're actually filtering saying we'll only run it if the marketing form is this specific form. I'm going to have it empty so we're going to run it for every single time any form is submitted. Now the next thing that we need to do is we're going to use the initialize variable step and we're going to do that twice. And we're going to call one contact condition met and one lead condition met. So what we're going to do is if you think about when you have a marketing form, if I just click back onto that one. So on the marketing form, you have a field that is uh, update contacts and leads. And it could be contacts only, um, uh, lead only, or contacts and leads. So what we want to do is we want to make sure are we actually going to wait until a contact is created um, because what happens is the form gets submitted and a contact and a lead are not matched and found or matched and created and matched immediately. It takes a little bit of time. So if we just went and said, okay, marketing form submitted, let's get the, de the details and then let's send the email we miss the opportunity to actually send uh, an email with a link back to that contact or back to that lead. So this is, if you've not done this before, this is basically um, looking for the initialize variable step. We have to give the variable a name and the type in this is Boolean, which is basically true or false. And we're setting the value already as false. And later on we'll use those so you'll understand why we've got those. So that's fine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get the related marketing form because when the form is submitted, it's the form itself that contains whether or not we want to update a contact, whether we're doing anything with the lead. So rather than wasting our time, we want to check that and see, okay, do we are we waiting for a contact to be matched, yes or no? So we're going to get the related marketing form, and this is a get a row by ID step, and we're looking for the marketing forms table, and we're going to use the marketing form ID value um, that is dynamic content. So if I click here, if I do marketing 
form ID. So we can see there from the initial trigger, if I search for marketing form, I've got marketing form ID. I'm going to use that in this um, section right here. So I'm getting the related form. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether or not contacts should actually be linked, whether there will be a contact that will be matched. So I'm going to um, do a uh, condition. I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to put two lines. I'm going to make sure that the operator is set to or not and. And I'm going to use the update. Um, so let me just search for this. Oh. Date. So I'm going to use this update contact leads field that we've just seen is on the marketing form and there's two possible scenarios. There's either it's update contacts, updates, update contacts and leads that we care about as to whether a contact will actually be matched. So I'm going to do is either equal to zero or, or equal to one. If that's the case, we carry on. If not, then nothing happens and we're not waiting for a contact to be matched. If a contact should be matched, then what we're going to do is we're going to add a um, action called do until. Now this is great because we can basically keep doing something until something happens. So we know, because we've just checked from the form, that a contact will actually need to be matched. So what will happen is the form will be submitted and then Dynamics will run some processes and try and find that contact. If a contact isn't found, meaning it's the first time that person submitted anything, then a new contact will be created. Now that can take a little bit of time. I mean, we're talk still talking seconds, but it could take a bit of time. So what we need to do is we need to keep checking to see if the contact has actually been added back into that form submission record or not. So this is where we're going to say do until that contact condition met variable, which we set here, and we said it set it as false, do it until that is equal to true. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a step and we're going to say get the um, marketing form submission again. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say is the matched contact field not equal to null? Okay, so we're basically saying if it's if if it is not equal to null then we're basically going to follow down and we're going to do some things we're basically saying okay it's not null meaning there is a value in there if it is null then we'll go down this and what we'll do is we'll say wait 10 seconds and then we'll try again and then what will happen is it will go back up to the top and it will um, start again and say, let's get the form submission again. Then it's saying, okay, we've waited another 10 seconds. Is the matched contact in the field yet? If it's not, then we're basically waiting 10 seconds and we're trying again. What we've got here is we've got how many times is that, that going to happen and what's the timeout. So you can set that um, higher if you wanted to. It shouldn't take too long, so 10 tries is probably enough. Once the matched contact field has something in there, then what we're going to do is we're going to carry on down and we're going to, first thing we're going to say, okay, well, yes, we found the contact, so set that to true. So what that then means is when we finish this and we go back up here, that now will equal true, so it won't continue down and do this all over again. So that is why we've got this in here to say, keep doing something until we found the contact. So we'll set the condition to true. What we'll then do is we will get the contact that's from the matched contacts field. And then what we're going to do is we are going to just um, form a uh, hyperlink so that we can put that into our email. So it'll have the name of the contact and then we'll be able to click on it and go back to it in Dynamics. So if you want the code for that, then click on the related blog post that's in the description for this video. Okay, so then we've done all of that and we've checked if contact should be linked and we've waited until that contact has been created or found and then we're going and we're, we're getting the information about that contact so we can have a link. We're going to do the exact same thing for a lead, but with this we're basically saying the update contact and leads field is equal to zero or it's equal to two, which is two will be leads only and zero is leads and contacts. And then we do the exact same thing. We basically say do this until the lead condition met field is equal to true. If 
the update contacts and leads doesn't equal either of these, so maybe it's only contacts, then it will go down the no column and it will ignore all of this and we won't be waiting for a lead to be created. Okay, so we're going through all of this. Um, so now we would have um, either or a contact and a lead that have been created. Then what we're going to do is we are going to add a step and if I just put this on, um, we're doing a get a row by ID and we are getting the marketing form submission again just because, again, like I said, the form submission gets created but there's other records that have to be created and linked back to it. So all of the fields themselves and their, their um, responses might not be in the system yet. So we're going to do one last check and we're going to say get the marketing form submission record again and we're using the um, marketing form submission ID from the original trigger step. So once we've done that, we're then doing a list rows action and we are saying we want to find all of the marketing field submissions where the form submission ID equals and again this is basically pulling from the last time we've got the marketing form which is here so we're using the marketing form submission ID if I just go ahead and search for it so you can see uh, marketing form submission so when I search for it I'll now find that it's in there as many times as I've actually pulled back the form submission I want to so we can see there get marketing form submission again get it again blah 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 I want it from the last time I just took it which is get marketing form submission again for fields I want that one so I'm putting that into my fetch again if you want to get the actual fetch that I've used go to the related blog post in the video um, and then what I'm also doing is there is a field called marketing form field ID which relates back to a specific form field that you've added onto the form we want to make sure that that's not empty because if it is then it's going to actually be the submit button or if you are using a form for an event submission and you've created a custom field for your event form they also don't actually pull back what the question is. So we want to exclude those because they're going to be meaningless if they come back in. And then finally, I'm ordering them by modified on date, which should put them in the same order of which someone submitted. I've seen it happen in my tests. I can't guarantee that that will always be the case. Um, but ideally, they are getting created at, in the same order in which the, the fields are submitted. All right, so once we've done that, we are then um, adding a couple of steps in um, to actually generate a table that shows the question and then shows the answer. So the first thing is I'm doing a select action. And what I'm doing is if I just click in here, um, we can see that we've got get field submissions the top thing is value which is a list of all of the items that are brought back so in other words all of the fields that were actually filled out we've we've said list all of those so now we're basically saying okay out of that list of those what we're doing is we're basically creating and mapping through and saying select the field name and give that a header of question and select the field value and give that a a header of answer. What I've also got is a colon um, after the field name just so that in the table it has the field name and a colon and then the answer. Just aesthetics, you don't have to do that. Then we're using the um, action of get HTML table, or sorry, create HTML table, and what we do is we find the output from this step above and we put that into this box here and we're saying create the table from the output of this step. The next step is not required, this is a compose step, but what I do, and I'll have a link in the description below to my friend Ryan McLean, his blog post, where he explains how you can basically format an HTML table using some CSS, so styling it. So this is basically just aesthetically to style the table a little bit. Not needed, but just makes it look a little bit nicer. 
Um, then what I'm doing is I am doing another compose step and what I want to do is include in the email a link to where the actual form were, was on the website and where it was filled out from. So that will be then, I want to turn it into a hyperlink, so I'm just doing a little bit of HTML to make it something that someone can click on rather than just being text that they'd have to copy and paste if they wanted to go to that web page. All right, finally, we get to the point where we are creating an email, and this is a send an email step um, or action from the Outlook connector. Um, where do you want to send it to? What's the subject? Pretty straightforward. And then I've just built out an email um, that contains information. So we've got the form name that I'm pulling from the... Um, uh, in the initial trigger step where we're basically pulling the form name tied to the form submission. I then have um, the date and time that it was submitted but I'm actually formatting that and I'm formatting it, uh, the created on date, and I'm formatting it as um, day, month, year and then the hour and then the, the minutes and then whether it's a.m. or p.m. So again, in the related blog post, I have uh, where you can just copy and paste that code. Then what I've got is I've got the output where I've created the, the web page link. I've got the output where I created a hyperlink for the contact. I've got the output where I created a hyperlink for the related lead. And then finally, I've got the output of where I formatted the HTML table. If you don't format it, that last output would be the output from the create HTML table. All right, so that's the entire flow. So now if I go ahead, I'm gonna fill this out. Okay, so I've filled all of that out and then I'm gonna go ahead and click register or submit or whatever that might be. So I've filled out my form, so now what that should be doing is it should be running through the flow and checking to see should a lead be created and matched um, or found and matched, should um, a contact be found, matched, created or whatever that might be. So I'm just going to um, pause and with the magic of editing I'm gonna come back once that email's created. Okay, so now here is the form that I received. So we can see that we've got the name of the form as main contact form. It was submitted this date and time. Um, the link to the original web page, which is a hyperlink. We've got a link to the contact, to the lead, which again are hyperlinks. Um, and then I've got all of the, um, the fields and Thankfully, it's come and it's shown up in the right order, so based on modified on date. Um, so we can see the first name, last name, email, company name, and bio. So hopefully you'll find the, this useful. It is something that I've been asked about a couple of times by clients, um, and it is certainly not an, a, a straightforward um, process to figure out. And like I said, putting in all the wait times and things like that, um, and checking to see if we're waiting for a lead, checking to see if we're waiting for contact information, that kind of thing. So hopefully it helps. Again, there's a blog post that's related to this. If you're unsure, there are screenshots of every single step. So if you want to zone in on something specific, please go ahead and look at the corresponding blog post. And let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.